Grand Rising. Hope everyone can hear me. A uh, few complaints last time that uh, wasn't being loud or, or that wasn't clear. Um, just pulling this up for you guys. Want to show you some more information, some more proof. A lot of times, a lot of people are looking for this information and they really just don't know where to look. Um, or they just don't have a, a sound grasp of everything that's uh, occurring when you're doing these, um, but when you're signing things, like it's a lot going on when you're signing things and your capacity is not being revealed to, to yourself of um, what position you're actually playing and what you're, um, you're not making claims to, which is very important. So this is Bank of America one to see that this is on their website. This is speaking about their investors and um, about securitizations. So this is letting people know where um, investors can come and they can buy um, receivables, which are account receivables. So I'm just gonna go out a little bit. And let me see, so I'll move this over. So we're in the credit ratings, capital issuances, securitizations, and you have the 2020 annual meeting of shareholders. These are the people who invest into it and they make returns on it, stock information. So this is Bank of America credit card trust, outstanding tranches. Um, I am not even aware of the word tranches. Let me just go and look that up. It's always good, helps. Okay, so a portion of something, especially money, they released the first tranche of the loan, see? And then it makes sense because a lot of times, like I said, you can be reading stuff and uh, gloss over it, catch a couple big words and just lose focus. Um, so this is beautiful. So this is a trance. So it's a, um, a portion of something, especially money. So these are all the class A trances right here. These have all the security numbers for those, um, um, for these, uh, I guess, securities. So they have them all right here on these and not available, but all of those have QCIPs assigned to them. Um, issuance currency, these are, I think, multi-millions or just millions is what the double M stands for. So issuance size, and this is in millions. Um, I believe that's actually correct. I've read that somewhere that that's millions. I don't think that would make sense to this just that amount. It could be. It's just issuing size. So maybe this is just the size of someone's credit card, their credit limit. Expected maturity. 22, 21, 20. This is coming up. All right, show you some more stuff. <clears throat> All right, so this is the master credit card trust too restated pooling and servicing agreements. I'm going to show you that in a minute. That's very important. And um, pretty much all uh, trust and stuff, that's what they have as a pooling and a servicing agreement. That would be um, the lender would be doing that. So they're going to pool all trust together. The, the bank or the car dealer might get all those cars that they sold that day. And I don't know if they do it uh, by the week, by the day, by the month, but they're going to sell all those and pull them, bundle them, to, bundle them together and sell them at a discount, which is what we were talking about yesterday. So let's see, just want to find you something juicy to see. So we're going to go here and this, there they are again, Bank of New York Mellon as the trustee on behalf of the certificate um, holders. So these are the security certificate holders. We were just speaking about that. Credit card funding LLC as transfer. Bank of America National Association as servicer. So all of this is really Bank of America, except for the Bank of New York Mellon. And um, they all work together, but just under different shells. So this is a national association, which is a bank. And then this is just an LLC. So they work together and hand stuff all to each other. Then you have the trustee. So this is funny because a lot of times when I'm, I've asked, I don't know, I'm not saying lawyers, but I've asked this question um, and they're saying that you can't have an entity as a trustee. The trustee must actually be a person. 
So that's not true. We're looking at it right here. And most times a board of trustees um, could actually be a trustee for a trust. So the, the board itself is an entity comprised of uh, people. So we have conveyance of receivables. We were just talking about this. Conveyance is um, the transferring of something and then the issuance of certificates. Let me just make this a little bigger. So you got covenants, additions of accounts, discount option. So they sold at discount. Uh, administration and servicing of receivables. Remember when they say that your, your loan or your account um, has been sold, um, that is incorrect. It's not your loan or the account. Well, it is the account, but the receivables is the account. This is money that someone is to receive, which can be transferred or assigned. So they have the right to collect. So yeah, this is really long. If you look at the, the little thing right here, showing you how far you can um, go down. So authenticating agent, new issuances, book entry certificates, very important. Notices declaring agency. Um, all right. Delegation of duties, very important. Payout events, service or defaults, trustee to act, trustee not liable for recitals, service to pay trustees fees and expenses. The trustee um, uh, is an employee of the trust, so the trust does get paid, the trustee does get paid. And of course, all his expenses and fees has to be reimbursed can't spend money of the trust um, without permission of the trust. So you got termination of the trust. At some point, the trust will end. Final payment with respect to all any series of the investors get paid out. Man, this is one I learned a long time ago. This is under the security and exchange um, rule 144. Very important. Um, I know I'm going over this pretty quick, I'm just glossing. This is stuff that you can come back and look up if you'd like. organized system to the laws of the state of New York as trustee. Then it has its articles. Definitions. Definitions are very important. Understand what it, what it means. Applicants shall have the meaning specified in section 607. Talking about some security. Made through book entries by a clearing agency as described in section 610, provided that after the occurrence of the condition whereupon book entry registration and transfer are no longer authorized and definitive certificates are to be issued to the certificate owner. Such certificates shall have, shall no longer be book entry certificates. So that's when they're actually issuing the um, physical certificates. All right, let's go back out. Um, where'd it go? All right, the trust prospectus, very important. So this is all that's on this page. I'm gonna show you a quick look at this real quick. Um, so Bank of America, the bank, is actually the sponsor, the servicer, and the originator. So they originate the loan, but they service it. Bank of America Credit Card Funding, LLC, transfer and depositor. So 
Um, this is something, like I said, we've been speaking about a very long time. I've been teaching that your, um, your agreement, your promissory note, your um, retail installment contract, buyer's or purchase order, all of these are financial assets <clears throat> um, which must be deposited. Once they're deposited, they are um, hypothecated nine times. So you create so much money. Um, uh, money in, in, in our system is created by loans and deposits. So you make the deposit, it increases it but nine times, and then you loan out the additional. So this is the issuing entity, Bank of America Credit Card Trust. So you have all of these in conjunction with each other. But they're all pretty much the same entity. You just have to have different, um, uh, uh, I guess, you know, Iron Man suits to change back and forth and do business with yourself. And that makes it all legal. I was trying to give you a look at some stuff here because this is another lengthy one. I'm seeing that little line right there. It goes all the way down there, so there's a lot in here. So I just wanted to show you a few things. Um, so owner trustee. A lot of words in here you'll probably recognize a lot. You probably won't. Um, you know what I'm saying? Take the time to, to look them up stuff you can do for yourself. Limited recourse to the issuing entity. Source of funds to pay the notes. That's where we come in at. We're the mule. So we're gonna be working and paying on these, um, on these notes. And the money goes into the trust and it's paid out to the shareholders. Sale, there it is, right here. Exactly the name of this uh, webinar. Not the derivative, but let me try to get it. Sale of credit card receivables. Sale of credit card receivables for BNA or BA series notes. Limited recourse to the issuing entity, security for the notes. Origination, account acquisition, credit lines and use of credit card accounts. So they're using those accounts as well. That's funny. I mean, you just can't see it on your side. You don't see any charges, but yeah, they're, they're using them as well. They're using your credit. The receivables purchase agreement. I'm actually going to go down to that and I'm going to show you a lot there. All right. So let me go right there. It's one, 140. Go there. I was trying to see if I was going to see anything really good to show you as I'm going along, but yeah, I'm going to zoom down to 140. So, yep, this is showing you how it looks. Parties transfer assets and operating documents. Receivables purchase agreement. So Bank of America sponsor service or originator. Receivables funding. So they get funded from... Um, the selling of the account or the notes, the interest in it, receivables. So it shows it's going up to Bank of America Credit Card Trust 2, Bank of American uh, Mellon Master Trust Trustee, Master Trust Agreement, Collateral Certificate, Trust Agreement, Denture. So Wilmington Trust Company, Owner, Trustee. That's all right, let me just get down here real quick. There's, there's more, let me see. So that says cardholders, payment of finance charges and principal comes down, it goes to the servicer, goes to the master trust, and then it goes into these funding holder of transfer interest other series of certificates if any bank of america credit card trust so it hits the trust application it goes there so it's showing you how this really works
Let's see what those transfer agreements. So I believe it starts here. Receivables purchase agreement. Sale of receivables. BNA is the owner of the accounts which generate the receivables that are purchased by the transfer under the receivables purchase agreement between BANA and funding and then transferred to by funding to Master Trust 2 in connection with the sale of receivables to funding BANA and prior to the BACCCS removal date as appropriate has filed appropriate UCC financing statements to evidence the sale of funding evidence the sale to funding and to perfect funding's right title and interest in those receivables. So this is crazy. They do file them, but they just don't file them uh, against us. So there's like a hidden, I guess you can say like a non-UCC file indicated in his computer files that the receivables have been sold to funding pursuant to the receivables purchase agreement. Sold all of its right title and interest in the receivables existing in the initial accounts at the close of business on the initial cutoff date and receivables arising thereafter in those accounts. In each case, including all interchange, insurance proceeds and recoveries allowable, um, allocable to such receivables, all monies due, um, probably y'all gonna say it small as hell, uh, all monies due or to become due, all amounts received or receivable, all collections and all proceeds, each as it relates to such receivables. And Banner will sell all of its right title and interest in the receivables existing in the additional accounts at the close of business on the date of designation for inclusion in Master Trust 2 and receivables arising thereafter in those accounts, including all interchange, insurance proceeds, and recoveries. So that that's everything right there. They're letting you know that they are definitely selling it. It's explaining how it's being done and everything. So let me go back here. And yeah, that wasn't even what I was really looking for. I'm gonna try to put in a couple different uh, words. See what comes up. All right, this one may be a little harder to find, but I'm gonna still look around and see what I can come up with. All right, we're here to 2019. Commercial net charge offs. This one isn't even that long. There's probably some stuff in here. Federal Reserve discount window. Take this part out, maybe.
Um, yeah, you just got to play around with it. Because hopefully, I mean, it's the way it should work, but the, if you can find that, if you can find a proof of securitization and bring that into your court case, that should help you win um, a summary judgment. So the basic structure of portal backed or residential mortgage-backed securitization is largely the same. Both involve asset-backed loans that are transferred into special purpose vehicles, placed into a trust as collateral, and the securities are sold for investment. There's the whole thing right there. You may see the following players. The loan originator, which originates the loan, pursuant to prescribed underwriting guidelines. Remember, um, I spoke about that thing earlier yesterday. Underwriting means um, the issuance of securities. So, Everything they're doing falls under securities um, fraud. Underwrite. Right. All right. Remember, I had to go here and see that. So it should be in here. The verb. <clears throat> I think this is where I found it yesterday. This is a security somewhere. All right, right here. The person or institution that agrees to sell a minimum number of securities of the company for a commission is called an underwriter. All right, underwriting guidelines. The sponsor, which is often the parent entity or affiliate of the originator, drives the securitization transaction and transfers the assets to a special purpose vehicle. The depositor, which is usually an affiliate of the sponsor. See, I told you they're, they're all, um, they're related companies, but they have to be different companies. And is the special purpose vehicle that acts as the repository for the assets to be securitized. So always want to make sure that you know what this means. So we'll go through that real quick. Um, Uh, a place or receptacle where things are or may be stored. So you can store information too, in which something abstract is held or to exist or be found. Central location where data is stored and managed. So it is a repository for the assets to be securitized. So it's letting you know from what we just read about the repository that it doesn't even have to be a tangible. So these are called um, payment intangibles for the assets to be securitized. The issuing entity, which is also usually an affiliate of the sponsor, see, it's totally related, and which issues the securities for sale to the securities underwriter. So the securities underwriter is actually buying the securities, which um, is kind of new to me. Um, the securities underwriter, which is typically an investment bank that evaluates the securities purchases them from the issuing entity and then offers them to investors. The trustee, which among other things, administers the trust that holds the securitized assets, makes payments to the investors and typically subcontracts the administration and servicing of the assets. Um, the servicer who processes billings to and payments from the borrower. So look at that. Payments to, oh no, it says processes billings to and payments from the borrower and finally the investor who purchases the securities all right 
wasn't exactly what I was looking for. Not mortgage. It's mortgage issuers. Um, while the representation made in connection with various RMBS transactions were generally consistent in nature, the representations made in connection with order loan securitizations are less uniform and have changed over time. For example, in a 2007 order loan securitization, the representations regarding each order loan and the prospectus included, there was no material misrepresentation by any obligor on his credit application. Okay, so they're saying that you who um, filled out for the loan didn't lie or make any mis excuse me misrepresentations. Each loan satisfies in all material respects the requirements under the originator's credit and collection. So. Oh, look like nothing's good here. Because they're not talking about the dirt that they're doing. They're talking about as long as that we came in with clean hands. Each loan is a legal, valid, and binding payment obligation in writing of the obligor, and no obligor has any right of action against the depositor, the servicer, or the issuing entity, or any right to offset, counterclaim, or rescission. That's some fucked up shit. They're right in there. Um, of the services do not reflect any facts which would give rise to any right of rescission, offset, claim, counterclaim, or defense with respect to such loan. And look at that. They have it in um, uh, the four corners, which means that it's not there because they never give, they never give a loan. <laughs> so it's pretty funny looking at this, how they have that. <laughs> they say anything that is in brackets is not on the paper. So why would you have to do that? It says, or the same being asserted or threatened with respect to such loan. Again, in brackets, not there. The loan was either originated by a dealer. We spoke about that. Remember I said dealer. So you usually add the word dealer, add the word ship. So it's dealership, but he's actually a dealer. So you would take the word ship off and he's a dealer in securities. It has been purchased by Santander Consumer in accordance with the terms of a dealer agreement between Santander Consumer and that dealer originated by Contender Consumer or acquired by Santander Consumer in accordance with the terms of a purchase agreement between the applicable originator and Santander Consumer. Santander Drive Auto Receivables Trust 2007. <clears throat> See if that helps with my search. Yeah, I got that. Yeah, it looks like they got a can down on. So I guess the, this that doesn't make sense. That's the law firm. Oh, okay, distribution uh, agent. 
Mm. But yeah, that's good stuff right there. And SEC has the power to enforce these. Typically, you can't bring um, private actions uh, for securities. You have to go through SEC um, in order for them to enforce against them. Um, and is this the same related case, maybe? This is on the DOJ's website. Seven billion in relief to struggling homeowners, borrowers, and communities affected by the bank's conduct. <clears throat> and this is under President Obama's Administration Financial Fraud Enforcement Task Force and its Residential Mortgage Backed Securities Working Group, which recovered $36.65 billion to date for American consumers and investors. See how we need to be suing? Um, like I said, sometimes I get a little upset. A lot of us tend to waste time on really insignificant stuff that, that I would say is just a distraction. But um, when it comes to like really putting our heads together and our time and resources and really focusing on stuff like this, because like I said, this has to be um, class action, um, uh, basically class actions. And that involves multiples. A lot of us have are, are victims of this. And we need to be able to come up, um, come together and, and stand up. Um, maybe some of us, like I said, are afraid Fear is never a friend. I always see fear as an enemy. It doesn't help you in any way. So it's useless. So I usually just discard fear. Fear is not um, a factor of my life. Um, so look at it. This is beautiful. All this money. I just see them billions, millions, billions, millions. All through this. 490 million in a tax relief re refund that will be incurred by consumers receiving certain types of relief if Congress fails to extend the tax relief coverage of the Mortgage Forgiveness Debt Relief Act of uh, 2007. Mortgage Forgiveness Debt Relief Act. I gotta look that one up. That definitely sounds good. All right. Sold them off in securities even when the bank knew a substantial number of those loans were defective. This is what led up to the 2008 um, housing bust, or, or not even just housing bust, but yeah, that was the bubble that burst, but the, um, the, the crash of 2008, the economic crash. This is some beautiful stuff. And I've already showed you um, how and where to find this if you want to go and look on your own, because I know some of you are going to ask questions and more and more information. As you can see, I'm not reading all this. I'm skimming through just getting some of the, the good stuff. If there's something you want to do on your own, feel free. Um, I've already showed you how to find it. You don't have to ask for a link or anything. It's right there. Um, consumer relief, loan list. Transaction list, that would be good. That's gonna have, I don't know if it's the consumer transaction list or the list with the, um, so these are the name of the deals. They're hidden, they're not <laughs> under your actual name. But this is pretty funny, this is everything. Securitizations issued by Bank of America. So your stuff is hidden in there somewhere. This is probably a whole bundle. And there's tons of them because you can see that little thing is still small, so it's got to go all the way down. These are all the deals. And 
Uh, some of it is 2006, 2007, 2005. So yeah, it's not even just from one year. A ton of them. Here real quick. I have a transaction list, tax plan, loan list. Maybe if loan list has it. Case number, default universe. No. Nope. All right. Go up here. Taxpayers to exclude income from the discharge of debt on the principal residence debt reduced through mortgage restructuring, as well as mortgage debt forgiven in connection with their foreclosure qualify for this relief. This is right from the IRS. All right, I think that's it. Um, I didn't want to take too much of your time. I got a, a ton of stuff I need to be doing. We got paper everywhere. Um, need to be filling this stuff out. It's just, uh, sometimes it, just getting your head in the space to want to work on this stuff, it's tough. You really got to find the motivation. Um, but yeah, just wanted to show you guys this. I was trying to actually uh, do it on Facebook Live and um, I guess they didn't want it out there, so it just kept like buffering and spinning. I couldn't get it to um to go live, so I figured I'd just do um a Zoom and then I would share it with you guys. So I think that's it, everybody. <laughs>